snack Me and you gonna have a little chat about them Hi guys, so I am here today to do some graphic novel reviews This is just going to be a quick joint review of the second volume of Fables And then the third volume of Fables so This is a series that I am trying to work my way steadily through and enjoy So, let's talk about the second volume first this is a series that is written by Bill Willingham. In this issue, we also get um, Mark Buckingham and Steve Lialola, who I assume are the artists, I'm not entirely sure. But this is called Animal Farm. It is volume two of Fables, and I actually really enjoyed this. It's been quite a while since I read volume one, although I did enjoy volume one because I didn't own them for quite a while, and then my boyfriend got them for my birthday, and I just... I wasn't sure if I liked volume one enough to like commit to buying them all, but he got them all for me. So I knew I would continue as soon as he did. I read volume two and I just, I really enjoyed this one. I felt like it was a massive step up from the first one. I felt like the world was getting developed far, far more in this one than it was in the first. And I felt like I was really getting to know the characters a lot more and just generally overview of what had happened to them and why they were in Fable Town. So basically what Fables is, if you don't know, is it's a story about these characters who are all from either fairy tales, fables, or sort of myths and legends that they've all been exiled from their homeland and they've had to come to the world where we live and set up a place called Fable Town where all of them live and there's sort of glamours so that normal Mundies or people who are called Mundies, which is basically normal humans, cannot see them and cannot sort of cross into their territory and get overwhelmed and confused by the fact that none of them age and they're all magical and things like this so it's a really fun story it's a really great little concept for a series and I love that it's done in graphic form and this one as you'll notice by the title definitely takes influence from George Orwell's Animal Farm and I've not read Animal Farm by George Orwell but I know kind of some of what happens in it just through like general stuff being said it definitely has reference to that and it's it's even called the same thing of course so Basically what happens in this one is we follow our main character of Snow White and Bigby and Snow White and her sister Rose Red decide that they're going to take a journey up to the farm which is where lots of the creatures and magical beasts or from the stories live because they can't necessarily live in the city next to all of the Mundies because the Mundies will figure out that they are unnatural in some form so they have a special place that is kind of out in the middle of nowhere and is a farm where they can all live and Snow White and her sister take a trip up there Snow White and her sister don't get on with each other either so it's already conflict and then when they get there they realize that things have started to go wrong on the farm it's all started to deteriorate and the animals there are rebelling and it's just it's a wacky but crazy kind of fun story the artwork of fables is very hit and miss with me because I really like bits of it but then I think other bits are really nasty um like I just don't enjoy them so I think the character of Snow White I actually really enjoy how she is drawn that's her but I think there are characters whom I just I don't enjoy the way that they're drawn as well like these pig characters are pretty creepy they're meant to be but they are I think it's it's a story that it appeals to me because I love the idea of this sort of escaped fairy tales if you like Once Upon a Time or The Wolf Among Us video game then both of them probably have referenced fables many times and and fables is fairly old now so I definitely think both of them have happened since fables um, although it has been an ongoing series for a very long time and I believe it only finished last year yeah it's, it's a really interesting concept and a really interesting idea and I think if you like either of those things you'll probably enjoy the series generally this is also a series that my boyfriend has read and he doesn't really read very many graphic novels but for him to read this and really enjoy it shows that it's not just something I enjoy it's something quite a lot of people find really fascinating as a concept and as an idea and I felt like this one really developed the relationship between Rose and Snow and I also felt like it really kind of gave us a more of an understanding of the wider world and what was going on and I just I really really loved it I just I had a great time reading it I mean I don't think the artwork is my favorite and I wish it was better but I can put up with it because I'm used to the characters now and I like them and I want to know what's going to happen with them and I want to know how the story is going to evolve so I gave this one a four out of five stars really really enjoyed it and then the next day I went on to the third one in the series um I think I have the first 10 so I'm just working my way through them all and this one is called storybook love and it's got the same people working on it again 
Bill Willingham is the writer. And this one focuses a lot more on the events that end the previous book. We also have some romance, hence the name Storybook Love, and we have some interfering characters who are rather nasty. For example, we have a character called Bluebeard, who has been a bit of a mischief to everyone for the first two issues. And in this one, he starts to get his plots uncovered by other people in the world and questioned about them. And we also get to see Snow and someone else have a romantic entanglement and I really enjoyed just getting to see more of this world and sort of expanding the world. I didn't think that the story itself, the self-contained volume, was as strong as the previous one. I felt like Animal Farm was a really strong self-contained volume that you could have just read on your own um, and it wouldn't have had to have anything else to back it up, whereas this one I feel like definitely needs the previous volume to, to back it up because of how it starts and what's been going on. But I did really enjoy just the overall concepts within this and I felt like we saw a lot more of the wider world. We also get a final issue within this that is just a self-contained story and that was really, really lovely and it's done in a completely different art style. So the art style generally is the same as before, as you can see, but then the ending art style is this art style, which is a little bit poppier, a little bit more fun, has brighter colours and sort of more um, enjoyment to it. And that's because they have a guest artist of Linda Medley doing the artwork for that, so it's this, as you can see. So I really, really enjoyed that sort of final little issue and I also felt like the whole thing was interesting. I think this one was a little bit less of a story for me than the previous just because it wasn't as self-contained like I say but I still really liked it so I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars and I definitely am looking forward to continuing on with the series and just getting further through and really loving it because it's just it's a fun series it's filled with magic it's filled with fairy tale and it's just it's filled with weird stuff going on between all of them and the character dynamics are constantly shifting and I just I just enjoy this and I just think it's really really fun <laughs> which is pretty much what it's meant to be I think so I love that Bill Willingham likes to sort of rip off other stories as well and take the good bits and then add more of his own stuff I think that's really fun and I just I think it's an excellent little series so I can't wait to continue following it and sort of continue seeing where it's going to go because it is just absolutely fantastic and even though I only gave it a 3.5, that is not to say that I don't like it at all. I really do. I just, I know that it's got the potential to be even better. So I'm sort of saving those five star ratings for later in the series when hopefully it gets really intense and wonderful. So can't wait to get on to some more of these. So you'll probably be seeing a couple more Fables reviews in the next few weeks, hopefully, because I'm definitely going to try and get through a large majority of the ones that I have so that I can take them back home with me and put them on my shelf. Let me know your thoughts if you've read volume one, two or three of Fables. Please don't spoil me for any of the others because I haven't got to them yet, but I would love to hear your thoughts on those ones. Thank you all for watching and I shall see you all very soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little